Hi everyone and welcome to the Techs in 10, the English Labs video that is here to bring some new ideas to you and explain some things that we thought were fantastic about some of the comparative pairs. Today we're looking at the pairing of the Queen and Ransom and we're going to look at what we felt were three major things that will really help you understand these texts and open up your understanding of them. So my name is Ben Taylor and I'll be taking you through those three things today. If at any point you have any questions or any queries about some of the things that we bring up, please make sure that you put them down in the comments and we'll be able to address them in due course. And so the first thing that we feel that will help you really understand these texts well is to take a look at the idea of convention. And obviously we want to go further than just identifying the fact that both of these texts talk about the way in which societies organize themselves to live in a conventional manner or what they see as conventional. But we need to really understand what that word means and we need to have some synonyms there to help us with the way in which we express our understanding of this idea. And so to be to follow a convention is to follow what has always been done, to do things the way in which they have always been done, to follow a status quo. Okay, and to be conservative in our views is to be looking to keep things going the way that they were, to resist change. On the other side of this coin, we have people that are more progressive in their views, that look to have change, that set out on an ambitious course in order to make change in a society and to change the way that we have done things and to do things in a new way. And so what we need to be able to do, rather than just identify the fact that both of these texts discuss the nature of convention, is to look at what they are saying, because through that we're going to be able to find some differences and some different things that they say about the nature of convention, so we can get to some really insightful comparison. And so one way that we can start to think about that is to think about who stands in the way of any change in these texts. And two major players in this are the spouses of both of these leaders. Prince Philip, who tells Queen Elizabeth to stick to her guns, is very symbolic of the old order and the way things have been. Of course, we also have Hecuba, who cannot understand Priam's intentions. And there's that fantastic line that sums up so much of what we're saying here, when Maloof describes Hecuba as being more tied to convention than what she believes. And so with that, we can get a further understanding of convention that it's something that people are tied to, that it's something that people uh, feel is a part of themselves and something that they are bound by. And so when we start to think of it that way, we start to picture the way in which these people live their lives. Queen Elizabeth has this unflinching view of who the people are in Great Britain and what they expect from their leader. I doubt there is anyone who knows the British people more than I do, Mr. Blair, nor who has greater faith in their wisdom and judgment. And it is my belief that they will any moment reject this, this mood, which is being stirred up by the press, in favour of a period of restrained grief and sober private mourning. That's the way we do things in this country, quietly, with dignity what the rest of the world has always admired us for. And of course, over time, this is shown to be a little naive and something that has shifted without her knowledge. Of course, as well, Maloof describes Troy in the way in which people go about their everyday lives, where they will go and they will throw uh, rose petals, they'll throw flowers at the soldiers, at the Trojan warriors as they go off to war every day. And so this idea of war and fighting and killing is part of the status quo. It's a part of the plan. It's a conventional way that they live their lives. However, Priam's children and his royal council are shocked at the idea that he might want to go just as a man to go and see Achilles and that to rid himself of all that makes him their leader and all that makes him royal is something that is quite shocking to them. And so when we start to look at this, we can realize that it is the unprecedented events, these tragic events that cause this shakeup, that cause this stir amongst the societies and that's what leads to change. And whilst we can see that as a similarity, the manner in which that change occurs is something where we can start to tease out some differences. And where you can really start to look at the differences in depth is to look at the manner of the change and whether it is lasting it or not. Of course, 
with uh, the Queen, we have a, a story where even though reluctantly she is able to address the nation and to get them back on side, it takes her shift in uh, understanding and attitude, even though, as I said, she does it reluctantly, in order to get there. And that the, the royal family and the monarchy is saved, that it was questioned there for a while, but the people come back on side because she is able to compromise somewhat with her televised address and to really acknowledge Diana's death in a way in which she didn't really want to, but in a way that she comes to understand she must because people's expectations of her have changed. And the way in which this is said uh, in the film is there are quotes along, you know, there's been a change in values, there's been a shift in values, there's a change in the streets. There is an understanding that the people of Great Britain now expect different things from the royal family and they expect a more human response to the death of Diana than what uh, the Queen Elizabeth is showing. When it comes to Ransom, we don't have that lasting change that we see in the Queen. We have a case where we have an event that uh, saw Priam come home as a man remade. We had this event that saw Achilles reach this new understanding of himself. And we have this quite liberating moment where the two of them see the world and see themselves and their place in the world in this brand new way and it's refreshing and it's there for them to enjoy and bask in, but it lasts for all of 11 days before the war starts again. Tellingly, it is Achilles' son, Neoptolemus, who ends up slaying Priam which leads to this idea of the cycle continuing and that the, the cycle of misery and war and fighting will only continue because it is just the convention of the way that things have been and that all positive progress that was made is completely lost upon these people. And we have a case of the war and the killing continuing on in the way that it did. Where Maloof is uh, able to sum this up in a way that I think is really worth uh, further study from you guys is in the manner in which he discusses the stream. Now, the, the stream can be symbolic of so many things, but we can also see it as a constant movement. The idea that life is moving along and is doing so in a way that is just always constant and moving along in this very conventional manner. Of course, he then describes this ripple in, in the stream and that the, the, the ripples go out across the stream, but then eventually disappear. And for me, that's a really fantastic way of understanding what he's saying about the entire story that he's laid out there, that there was this disruption to the stream, that there was this disruption to the status quo and the conventional way in which the Trojans and the Greeks saw their lives, but it was only fleeting and that it was temporary and things were eventually rushed over and went back to the way that they were. So number two, with our ideas that are gonna help you really understand this text in greater depth, is to look at the idea of leadership. And just like with the word convention, we want to make sure that we're going beyond simple identification. We don't want to just merely get to the end of our paragraph or essay and have said, both of these texts talk about leaders, they explore it, because we already know that right off the bat. So we need to go further than that and to start to ask some questions about leadership and to start to make some statements about what either of these texts say about leadership. And so one great way of doing that is to look at leadership as a burden. And we know that from the outset of the film where we have the quote is the first thing that we see, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. We have this understanding that these stories are about leaders and what they must go through. And so when we look at that, we start to think about other things in terms of Queen Elizabeth and duty first and self second. We understand that the way that she must live her life is to undertake the duty and what is expected of her. And so leadership is seen as this thing that has a great expectation from the people that they are leading and that there is a great expectation and a burden placed upon them to carry out things in the way that is expected of them. That's not the way we do things in this country. That's the way she was brought up. All of these things show how Queen Elizabeth has led to this conventional and conservative view of the world because she's always had this burden of great expectation placed upon her. Of course, this also comes about when we look at Priam and the manner in which he begins to realize that with his herald and with the way that things have been done for him, that his life has been lived for him, that he has been told what to say and that he has been largely just a ceremonial figure that may as well have been made of stone or wood and that he is just a person that has just continued on with the status quo and done what was expected of him at all times as the King of Troy. So where this starts to have an impact is where we can start to see how it impacts upon 
their personal lives and this conflict that exists between their role as a leader and then their role as a human being. And as Priam points out, that he is mortal. He is just a man, that, that God, the gods had made him a king, but also a man. And we also see this in Queen Elizabeth and her experience when the audience might be feeling some quite negative or frustrated feelings towards Queen Elizabeth, but there is that moment where she points out that she has taken her grandsons to Balmoral to help them grieve and that even though she is the queen of, of this nation, she is also a grandmother as well. And But those two things can't coexist in this way that is peaceful because there is such an expectation placed upon her as a leader. There, grief. Imagine I'm going to drop everything and come down to London before I attend to my grandchildren who've just lost their mother. And you're mistaken. Of course, this also comes about with Priam, when he begins to understand through his experiences with Somax that he may not have had that emotional link to Hector as his son that, that Somax would have. And when he can't remember the things that Hecuba remembered about each of their babies, he realises that there are these things that he has missed out because of the way in which he has seen himself and that he has missed out on these human connections. And so when we start to sum up this idea, we need to think about what either of these texts are saying about leadership and the different ways in which it is a burden and the different ways in which these characters experience it. Of course, the final thing I want to mention is that you need to go further than just looking at Priam and Queen Elizabeth. It's completely okay to obviously have them as part of your analysis, but if that's all that you're doing, you're missing out on some other great things. Tony Blair obviously is a leader in his own right and we need to see the way in which he is able to work with people and work with the Queen and what is uh, comes about through his leadership. Of course, we also have Achilles, who is a, is a leader, not always in the most positive sense, but we can see that he adds a new dynamic to the idea of leadership in that the Myrmidons are so loyal to him that they have such a love and a loyalty to him that even though he breaks daily every rule that he's taught them to live by, they are unflinching and unquestioning in their loyalty to him. And so when we look at leadership, we need to look at all of the aspects of it, all of the dynamics of it, and essentially come up with statements about what either of the texts are saying about leadership and then how they start to differ, because that's when you're going to be able to start to get to some really good comparison. Of course, you can also look at how uh, Maloof or Frears have shown the strain that's placed upon leaders and the way in which they must work with the people that they are leading. And that's going to obviously also open you up to some fantastic comparison of how the texts are constructed. Number three on our ideas to really help you understand these texts in greater depth is a little bit different in that I want you just to consider the manner in which these texts have been put together and the manner in which they've been structured. So rather than looking at just ideas here, we're going to look at how these ideas come about. And so what I want you to consider here is how people are brought to an understanding of their world and their place within it. And what I mean by that is, is that I need you to consider the characters that have a very different understanding of themselves and the world by the end of the text than what they do at the start. And now you may have done this with lots of other texts. It's something that exists in all of literature, that we have a character that has an understanding at the orientation of the story. They then go through some events and they understand things differently. That happens in any form of entertainment or literature. But where it's really telling in this, uh, in this pairing is that it is people that bring those uh, that bring others to this new understanding. Whether that is the relationship between Tony Blair and Queen Elizabeth, and that Blair is able to bring the Queen to understand this new modern expectation of the royal family, or whether it is the simple Somax who able, is able to bring out this understanding of the world to Priam through these very basic experiences such as him cooling his feet in the water and the fact that he understands that well, the food that he has eaten his whole life has had ingredients and that it has come from somewhere. These small pleasures open up Priam's understanding of the world. And so we can start to draft sentences in our head along the lines of just as Blair is able to allow Queen Elizabeth to see whatever it might be, so Max brings Priam to an understanding of whatever it might be. And when we start to think that way and we start to draft those types of sentences, we're leading ourselves to more insightful, more succinct 
comparative work, that we can talk about the text within the one sentence, that we can have a more woven analysis, and that we can take, take a step back and actually compare not just the ideas of these texts, but the manner in which these ideas are brought about so that we can show a full understanding and a holistic understanding of the comparisons that we can make between these two texts. Lastly, with this idea, make sure that you consider the relationship between Blair and Queen Elizabeth from both sides as well. If we were to take a very blunt understanding of this text, we'd say that Queen Elizabeth doesn't understand things, Blair does, and Blair gets her to understand things differently. However, we need to look at Blair and what he appreciates by the end of the film as well. He goes from making jokes about the Queen and uh, sharing in uh, the mocking of the, the pomp and the ceremony with his wife Cherie when they are going to meet Queen Elizabeth, but then by the end of the film he says to her, what she's doing is extraordinary. So Blair has been changed as well over that summer. Blair has this new understanding and appreciation for the royal family, and it's pointed out by his wife, who says, a week ago you were the great modernizer. That's not the point. What she's doing is extraordinary. In good times and bad, she never lost her That's how to survive. Listen to you. But a week ago, you were the great modernizer. And now he's someone who is having this appreciation and this understanding of the Queen. And so there's a range of things there that we can open up, but the way in which we can talk about how people are brought to a new understanding and how they are overcome their previous understanding of the world can be a really rich source of comparison for you. So guys, that's the end of our video for today. We aim to have many subsequent videos on The Queen and Ransom. We're going to have some uh, videos looking at uh, how to respond to essay questions, how to um, put together comparative paragraphs that aren't too long or aren't too bogged down in evidence. So if you'd like to be kept on top of all of those things, you can receive notifications for them simply by subscribing to our channel. We'd really appreciate if you could like the video, if you've got something out of it, if you could subscribe to the channel so that you're kept aware of all the future videos that are coming up. We'll also be uh, looking at the Section A texts, as well as some language analysis material and other things that we can help out with, with some shorter videos that we feel will really help you get ready for the English exam. Until then, if you have any comments, please put them below. Our aim with these videos is not just to help you out with what we're saying down the camera lens, but also through being interactive in the comments. So if there's anything that was brought up today that you'd like further clarification on, any comments that you might have that you think might take the discussion further, or any queries that you have in general about VCE English, please place them down in the comments and we'll aim to get back to you really, really quickly. Until next time, all the best with your studies and good luck.